Welcome back to Amazing by Nikki. I'm here with part two of making um, this book cover for my wildflower journal. And this is gonna be a five signature um, book cover, or a five signature journal. This is the book cover in process for that. In my last video, if you missed it, um, I we got to this point so we created the the built the book cover uh, reinforced it and then covered it with velvet and talked through some tips and tricks and hints along the way and now we're going to get to uh, line the inside here and then we're going to actually sew in our signatures and then we will be ready to be done with this then my next video should be a flip through of all four of the wildflower journals so today in order to um build this out i i'll show i apologize right now uh if you hear a whirring in the background that is my air conditioner it has gotten very very muggy and hot here today um, in the great white north we don't get many of these days but it is over 90 and uh, really humid so we don't get many of these days up here but it today is one of the days so I've got my air conditioner going I tried just running it hard and then shutting it off so I could film and it's just got way too hot in here there's no basement under this part of the house it's a, a an addition on the front of our house and um, my studio the room my studio is and I think the combination of not having a basement underneath to keep the cool air and then uh, just it being kind of on its own out here with like outdoor air on the three sides of it keeps it cooler in the winter and makes it warmer in the summer so anyway enough about that we're gonna need binder clips you're gonna need four of them um, and uh, these are big two inch ones the bigger the better in my book you're gonna want some uh, waxed linen thread or in my last video I said you can bind with whatever you want to um, you know twine embroidery floss yarn I mean string whatever right um, just beware of what you use the strength on it has to last the test of time and signatures get a lot of uh, you know abuse in over time so I like waxed linen it keeps your knot really tight and so then it keeps good tension um, on there so I prefer wax linen <clears throat> you can get it for fairly inexpensive on Amazon uh, here in the US um, then I've still got glue all over my hand this is my uh, large blunt tip needle that I'm gonna use to sew my signatures in you're gonna need an awl this is mine it came in a very basic book binding kit that I bought like I don't know six years ago when I started this whole journey and it's still the one that I use I think every once in a while I should buy a new one but you know what the tip on this is still sharp and I really have no good excuse to have to buy a new one so I don't <laughs> then um, you're gonna need some adhesive again I showed this in the last video but this is a pH neutral adhesive it is archival quality and this is the one by line co I get these big bottles on Amazon um, this one does it say how many ounces are in here I don't remember how big anyway this is a big one I mean this is my hand next to it right so this is a big bottle of the glue uh, but it lasts a long time like this will last me a long time uh, and then I have a punching template and I will explain this I have several of these um, but in my last video we cut off and had extra pieces of cardboard I always keep these I mean you're gonna end up with a lot of them but I keep these because uh, I can make punching templates so this is my two and a half inch spine for five signatures so since that's what we're doing and I just happen to have a punching signature that will make punching the holes through the spine so much easier it's already measured out I've already done all of the you know measuring to make sure my spaces are even so anyway we'll talk about that in a minute we don't need to get to that quite yet I'm gonna move some of this out of the way because first let's take a look at this this was sitting under oh let's get the this is in my last video I said if you're working with velvet you want to keep one of these rollers around because um, as you cut on it and stuff you get all these little pieces of 
shreds of stuff there but now look how pretty it is and before I glue stuff down I just want to make sure I don't have extra chunks because you don't need extra chunks look at all the chunks of velvet <laughs> on my roller okay so this is the cover that we made and it has um, dried completely and I dried it under a large book on the floor so it dried nice and flat and now um, hat I you know in my last video I said the first thing I always want to do is pick it up and start flexing it but while it's still wet if I had done that these little spots right here especially in the crease would have bubbled up and that would have stayed that way it wouldn't have dried nice so now when I fold it though look at that it stays nice and crisp on the edges so now what I like to do is take them into just kind of make sure that this crease gets in there real good and make sure that this hinge, which is now double reinforced with fabric on the outside and with tie back on the inside, I like to just give it some flexibility. So I take it and fold it in on itself because once we line it, then it's going to get stiffer again. So I like to take these edges and fold them in and just work some flexibility back into this cover because I don't want to get to the point where, you know, you open it and it's like, and somebody feels like they're going to hurt the book because you shouldn't feel like you're going to hurt the book by opening it. Um, you'll also notice, well, let's see if I can show you. Yeah, right there. So remember when I was using my, um, my, uh, paper folder to press down inside here right in these lines uh, that we've created with the hinge now look we've got this nice little space on there on the hinge and it's just a nice little detail if you look at other and you can't even notice it as much on here because of the pile on the velvet but um anyway we've got our book cover ready to go except for um, oh, here, I'll show you. We got to line it though. We also, you also need your de design, your, your signatures. Dry fitting. I didn't dry fit yet, but look at that. <gasps> you guys, isn't that going to be so cute? So the edges, I can see all the fluff on the edge, but also the pages are well back behind here by at least a quarter of an inch. And there's like a, a eighth of an inch or so at the top headspace at the top and bottom and even when I set it down look at that before we bind there's no crocodile mouth happening so once we tighten up and bind into it that might create a little bit more work there but I think we'll be good all right so you have a couple choices when it comes to this you can put some paper in here um, the one thing to say we're gonna bind right through the spine so we're going to see the binding on the back on this one. Um, if you're doing a hidden binding, which I have also shown that in other videos, if you're interested in that, I have other videos where I show how to do a hidden binding. Um, but if you're going to line this with paper, the one thing is this is now over 13 inches. So a single sheet of 12 by 12 will only come to like here so you would have a big gap around the sides you know you can like you can do that if you like let me grab a piece of 12 by 12 here and just kind of show you what i'm talking about well here's a 12 by 12 tablet so if i were to try and do my book like that i have a big space more than an inch on either side so if you had come in enough you know then it would be okay but you're going to see these little cutouts that we did up here. So you'd have to push it up enough on top, but then you'd have a weird, you'd have a thin here and then wide here. So one sheet of 12 by 12, while it would be nice and convenient to put across, won't work. So what you've got to do if you want to use paper is measure, you know, on, on your cover and your back how wide you want it to come. I usually try to leave like a, a quarter inch seam around it. So you can put one larger piece across your spine and then have that come out, you know, here or so and glue that down first and then put an end paper on either side and then this will stay 
you know, you would just see this and a nice edge. Um, I do that in another video as well. Today, we are not doing that. Today, I've got this uh, cute little hunk of, I call it pillowcase cloth. Um, and I thought that this would look super cute. Um, it goes right with the color scheme and I thought this would look super cute on the inside here. And since I'm binding right through the spine, the nice thing about fabric is it is larger. If you have a larger piece than your book cover is, you can size it to cup, you know, cover your entire thing. So I, I'm going to use this cause I think this is adorable. Um, I do this every time I use this stuff, I stare at it. I do this. Is there a right side? Is there a right side? I don't think there is. Um, and it already has a torn edge on this side and a torn edge on this side. So I'm going to uh, make a torn edge along the bottom and along this side. And then we can have this really cute kind of just like frayed edge right up to the edge there. If you want to, if you're making more of a shabby journal, you can have the inside stuff hang out over the edge and then it kind of shows through around the edge like that. That is a super cute look as well. It's just not what I'm going to do today, but you can certainly do that. You just got to cut your, you know, size your fabric, right? Now I'm going to get my two edges lined up that are already torn. Like I said, I want to make sure those are kind of right where I want them. I want to come right up within like a quarter or an eighth of an inch from the edge. And then remember when you put a bunch of glue down on a thinner fabric, it will kind of stretch depending on the direction of the weave and stuff. Just keep that in mind. So I've got this lined up and I'm going to trim. I'm going to go right there. There are few things that are as satisfying as tearing fabric. I, can I get a witness? You guys, I love that. I don't know why. I just love the sound of it. I love the feel of it. I love tearing the fabric. When I go to the fabric store and the, you know, ladies back there cut and then tear the big piece, I'm always like, yeah, tear the fabric. It's a thing. I don't know. I find it very satisfying. Okay. Now I'm just kind of relining up because now I need to make my final decision on where I'm gonna tear this end. And I think I will go there. Commit. Okay, this is also because it's a bigger weave. It is like the stringiest, stringiest mess. I'm gonna keep these little pieces at hand because I'm not really sure. I'm undecided on what I want to do on the cover here um, and I made some cute little cover pieces for the other journals in this set but this is the flagship journal so sometimes I do that a little different we'll see it's wherever the wind blows at the moment that I am doing it okay so <coughs> excuse me as you can yeah you can see it there is a thin little pink border all the way along this is not ironed nor does it really need to be because as soon as we get glue on here it's all going to level out there's some wrinkles and it's whatever a word on using a thicker um, like this is an upholstery fabric so it's a velvet upholstery fabric right here there is quite a bit of a pronounced ridge so um, moving from this down to the fabric. Again, I really don't mind that and I'm just not going to mess with it. If it really bothers you, I mean, cause you will see it. You will see it. If you had really jaggedy edges to your fabric or something, um, you might want to do something different. You could put a piece of like cardstock, cut a piece of cardstock, uh, you could, um, cause you'll even see it if you use a thinner paper. If you were going to line this with paper, I would suggest like a cardstock or something heavier. Um, but you will see this edge. I'm just letting you know that now. And you will probably be able to see it on camera. I'm not entirely sure, but, um, you know, 
it is what it is. So in gluing this down, I am going to do it slightly different than I did last time um, where we started on the spine. Here what I'm going to do is start on the inside, not the fabric. I'm going to avoid the fabric. I've got my glue here that I diligently put in a baggie while I took Joy to physical therapy this morning, which is now for you guys the next day or however many days later it is that you're watching me. Um, so I'm going to just paint the inside here and that'll allow me to make sure that I'm lining up my fabric well with where I want it. Again, this is a little bit um, of a thicker cloth, this ticking, pill I call it pillow ticking, I don't know what it's actually called, but uh, it reminds me when I was growing up I had a, a pillow that had this, it was the pink version of this blue stripe. It was a pink stripe then I guess. <laughs> you could just say it that way. Uh, all right so anyway it'll allow me to line the fabric up a little bit better. This is a bit like I was saying it's a bit thicker fabric. Uh, if you're using something thin like a very thin calico print or a quilting cloth or fabric or something you would definitely want to make sure you're not going too heavy on the glue here because it will show through. All right. Now I am going to reline this up before I start pressing down, get rid of this thread and just kind of make sure I'm happy with the placement. If I had glue all the way out to the edges, I wouldn't be able to move this around as much. That's why I start with the glue in the middle because it leaves these free edges, well, free, okay. I'm pretty happy with where I've got that lined up. So I'm gonna press down the cloth down into the glue. And I'm just using my hand. Okay, now that I feel like that is straight and flat, I am just going to, well, I'm gonna give myself a little more glue in my tray. And then I am gonna take my brush and just start kind of going under the edge here. This velvet is gonna suck up the glue. You could probably also try to use um, like Fabri-Tac for this, but I feel like I have better control and better coverage using a paintbrush. So that is what I choose. If it were Fabri-Tac, I just like kind of I was talking about in my last video, you don't get full adhesion, you're still like missing parts. And for this kind of application, I really just want nice full coverage and full adhesion. I think, like I was saying before, book covers are some of the most abused parts of the book. You know, they take all the hits from the outside world. They've got to protect all the beauty stuff in the beauties inside that you worked so hard on. So, you know, might as well take the little bit of extra time to use the brush and then have to clean up the brush, but. But my life is, my, my crafty journey is not always do as I say, not as, it often is do as I say, not as I do. Cause I, I start, uh, I say one thing and then you'll see me in the next video doing the other thing. These are just best practices, but I'm not always practicing best practices. That's all. This is laying nice and flat and I'm really liking how it's looking. This last little edge here. Okay, guys, that looks nice, nice and flat. Now I'm going to take my handy dandy um, bone folder. Why can I not call this thing what it's called all day long? 
And while it's still wet here, I'm going to do what I did on the front, and I'm just going to go ahead and put a score basically in here. Um, and here's why. I don't, let's see. See, that's a nice crisp line. If I were to just do it over here, see how I get a nice crisp line here, but I get a wrinkly mess here. But if I can guide this fabric into the hinge by pushing, you know, this in while it's wet, I'm going to get a much nicer looking finish here. So I'm going to do that for a second here. I'm just going to do it a couple times and let it kind of, the fabric as it's wet with the glue will just kind of stretch itself in here as I'm manipulating it a bit. And we'll get two nicer looking finishes there. So that just helps the, the hinge guide that fabric rather than wanting to bubble up a little. So we've got a lovely fabric lined cover here. And it is now officially all ready to be sewn into and, you know, decorated on front if we're going to do anything there. And yeah, I'm going to, this one little corner here just wants to kind of bubble up. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do is rather, I don't know if I'm going to let it dry flat. I suppose I will. I usually do anyway. I'm just this one little corner here. Let me press it down in there one more time. And then, uh, you know what, I'll re... I'll re-push that down once we get to sewing into it. Um, let's just talk about this really quick while we wait for that to dry a little more. This is my template like I showed you before. This is how I'm going to punch my holes through. So I've got ones that are three signatures, four signatures, but here's just a real basic you know, way to measure. You want the piece of cardboard to be exactly the same size as your spine is. Um, once you've got it covered in fabric, you'll probably think this seems a little shorter than your spine, but that's because it's now got fabric on top and bottom. So uh, you wanna cut this to the exact dimensions. Your template should be the exact dimensions of your um, spine in your book. You can make these out of, you know, cardstock. I paper might, you know, well, I mean, you can make it out of paper. You're not, they're not getting a lot of abuse. I just like cardboard ones because these things stand the test of time. I have had this one for um, a while. And so um, what I do is go ahead and do my measurements. So it, depending on how many signatures you have, you're going to want to split your, you know, divide your signature up. Now, just a word on that. Let me see. Can I zoom you in? Yeah, look at that. Okay. So, um, when I'm measuring across, so this is two and a half, and you're going to have some glare. I apologize. That's going to make it a little harder. When, it, when I measure across, I've got two and a half inches. You want to make your first, you know, you don't want to divide this exactly into five because you don't want your first signature, you know, way, way, way out on the edge. I always put mine in like at least a quarter of an inch. So I usually put a quarter of an inch space on either side and that's where my first signature goes. Then I go to the absolute middle and I'd make that my middle signature. If you have an odd number, that works out really great. If you have an even number of signatures, then you have to do a little bit more mathing, but I, I trust you. You guys are, you know, you're smart. You can do the mathing. Or you honestly, you could eyeball it. You just have to live with, you know, be okay with the eyeballing it. I'm okay with eyeballing a whole lot of things, but for some reason these, I measure, I measure, and I math, and sometimes I make myself crazy doing it. But the middle one, if you have an odd number of signatures, the middle one's easy to find. It's literally just half of whatever your total is. And then I just, instead of trying to figure out, you know, a measurement for each of the middle signatures, I just go to my um, inside my outside and add 
my outside signature, so I start here and measure across to here, which is now two inches, since I had two and a half, that's two inches. So this is one inch and one inch, which means this is a half inch. So each of these are a half inch apart. That math was not so difficult, and it, it, was, it was a little painful, <laughs> and that's what these little marks were here. Bloop, 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 and then down on the bottom across there and then I just go like this and draw my lines right so I do those and then you have to do the mathing the lateral way so you want to figure out where middle is that's easy because your middle hole is going to be midway of the measurement and then again I like to start up a half inch and start up a half inch so a quarter in from the sides and a half from the top and bottom that's, those measurements are easy, middle measurement is easy. And then I do the same thing. I measure from my, from here to here. And you can even do this, I mean, if you wanna do it the easy math way and don't wanna have to actually do math <laughs> too hard, you can count the half inches in between this hole and this hole and then figure out how many you need to go over or the quarter inches, whatever works for you. Um, just do your best to divide it up evenly and then this is now a punching template and boy once you've done that mathing then you're going to want to make sure that you uh never have to actually do the math again and that's why you're going to keep your punching template <laughs> and i just keep it in the drawer that i have all of my um i label them and then i keep it in the drawer that i have all my all and my um binder clips and everything in so all my binding supplies are in the same spot. All right, that said, I'm gonna give this guy one more crease and then we're gonna start doing the dang thing. All right, so I'm gonna take two of my binder clips and then I'm gonna show you when I fold this up, look at that, it is exactly the size of my spine. So I'm gonna center it, but to center it, all I gotta do is fold these up and like go like this and push it down and now it's exactly centered. And I should have just a little bit here and a little bit here because like I said, the velvet. So I'm gonna clip it on. Like so. And like so, and then I'm gonna go like this one more time and make sure that I haven't scooched. This is an important step to make sure you're nice and straight because um, you do not want to sew in. If you get a little wonky on your punching template, if you get your punching template in there a little wonky and you start punching and your signatures are going a little bit crookedy, that makes such a weirdness. Okay. So I'm clipped in and now literally all I have to do is boop, 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 punch through all the holes. This um, can be a little bit difficult because, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna scoot this one up and I'm gonna start at this end. This can be a little bit difficult in this application. We are going through right here. I'm going through fabric glue velvet glue, book board glue, and another layer of velvet. So what I'm gonna do is scoot this down past the edge of my table. You're not gonna be able to see this, but what I'm doing is punching past, you know, off the edge of the table so I can really get my elbow into it. And boy, if this doesn't, um, there we go. See, there's my all coming through on the backside. If this doesn't just get my tendonitis in my hands and my elbows and everything to flare up, I just don't know what else could. So uh, in an effort to not bore the crap out of you and to be able to like pull this back to where I can more safely do this so I'm not trying to do it out here and wreck my elbows and tendonitis and all that stuff, I'm just gonna go through and punch. But you just trust me that I'm literally punching a hole through all the holes. That it's not that hard to do. So I'm gonna punch a hole through all the holes and I'll be right back. So I have punched all of the holes as is best practice. <laughs> I'm going to flip it over. One, two, three, four, five, 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 five. 
five. There have been plenty of times that I have been punching and have missed, you know, a hole, but you can tell on the back. Okay, so I'm gonna take this. Thank you for your service. You will be gladly used in another time. Um, now I've got all my holes and I am ready to start binding my signatures in. Now, you have many, many options here. You can certainly just do straight lines down, right? Straight, straight, straight. Um, you can cross over and stuff. There are a thousand fancy binding tutorials that you can find uh, online. And um, I certainly have done some of them, but I think in this case, we're just gonna keep this to a very basic uh, straight line down. I, I love to actually put buttons in between them. That's one of my favorite things to do. Um, but again, this isn't, this isn't that video today about binding fancy or anything. So because of that, I'm literally just gonna start with the first signature here and bind through. Um, one signature at a time, we're gonna just bind these in. Before I bind a signature in, I always flip through, make sure that there aren't any things stuck in the center, that all the pages are lined up. A lot of times I have little half pages. I wanna make sure that they're centered how I want them to look and then I think everything's good. So I'm going to arrive at the center signature here. And I have described this before too, but what you wanna do is keep all the folds in a line. It would be easy to just kind of lay it flat and clip it, but you wanna make sure that all your folds stay in a line because that's going to allow your pages to turn the best. So I take these two fingers and put them on either side of this and then pinch it down with my thumb like this and try to keep it flattish. And that's when I put on the binder clip because then I can make sure that the, the fold is staying aligned. You don't want it to get wonky, it's top and bottom. You want the fold to stay aligned. So I feel like my fold is nice and lined up. So when I bind through, it's going to turn the best. I'm happy with my binder clip placement. And now I need to cut my first piece of thread. I like to do the most, so I give myself like this much, you know, above my journal, times two. You can always cut it off but I have certainly gotten to the point and I'm going to, since I have five signatures, I'm just going to save myself the time and get them all now. I have certainly gotten to the point where I have had not enough and uh, then have had to like go back and get more. So I would much rather throw away an extra six inches that I cut off than throw away a whole piece that I didn't cut long enough. One more. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I'm going to grab my first piece. Oh my gosh, you guys. You know what? As I'm sitting here going, oh, I'm threading my needle. You know what I totally forgot to do? We're missing an integral step. How are we going to know where to poke the holes through our signature? Duh. Golly, guys. Oh my gosh, I'm going to set this aside. Forget that whole part where I said we were ready to bind. Um, I'm going to, okay, here we go. I'm going to grab a piece of paper. This is just a scrap piece from over next to my table and I'm going to fold it in half. It does not matter how big or small your paper is. You just want it to be the same length as your punching template. This part's easy to make. 
you don't have to do measuring. That's the beauty behind the punching template, is it already gives you all the measurements that you would need. So I'm gonna take the folded edge, right? The folded edge, this is my folded edge, and line it up next to one of the lines of holes and just make a mark right up over the edge there. And this is gonna tell me exactly where to punch holes. So now we can put that away and I'm just gonna take that over the middle a little, over the fold, over the fold. And there we go. Now we have a, our inside punching template and I'm gonna fold it back this way. I was like, as I was putting those binder clips on, I thought, what am I missing? I feel like I'm missing something. This is what I was missing, dudes. All right. So I'm going to, um, now my punching template is slightly longer than my signature. So I am going to, again, this is very brave, guys, but it's okay because this is going to be the same on every signature that you do. I'm going to cut like an eighth of an inch, more or less, off the top and bottom. That's better. Okay, now I'm going to get all this lined up again. and just clip that on. Because you want this to stay on. You don't want it to be moving around. If you were moving it around, then you, you know, your holes wouldn't be uniform. And it's too far down. Again, it's the part where you're getting the, the measurements right and taking the little bit of extra time. That's the part that's important because you don't want to sew in wonky. Once you get this done and you're sewing in, you're, you're good. You just don't want to, you don't want to punch weird or, or sew in weird. Now I literally just go through and punch through, I do that and then I come up like this. You can, if you're doing it like this, part of the problem can be even small things like this. Like if I were to hold this in my right hand and punch through like this, I would think I was going straight, but I would be going at an, an angle, right? And in doing so, it, it will affect the way your book turns. So I like to get it just punched a little bit flip it over and come straight up because then I feel like I'm getting the straightest punch through there. I'm just doing each hole and you don't have to go all the way through. Alls are graduated and you don't want to, you know, you don't want to punch all the way through up to the top of your thing. You're going to create a really big hole. Now you don't want to sew this in, so I'm going to just move all of my binder clips over off of that and we'll just save it for our next signature. There. All right, now we're ready. <laughs> now we're ready to sew. I'm going to put the little squeezer guys down. And I've got my needle that I already threaded. And we're going to do a five hole pamphlet stitch. So that starts in the middle. I want my threads to stay on the inside, so we're gonna do that. And we're gonna go through the first row over here and go all the way through. And I'm gonna leave myself a good tail. Then, what I sometimes like to do with the tail just to keep it from going out is uh, stick it under a binder clip here, like that. That just does a little to help it not escape, right? So we're through, I'm gonna flip it over. Oh my gosh, this is hard to show on camera. Every time I try to do this, I'm like, this is the hardest thing to show. Okay, so this is right side up. So I went down through the middle, then we're gonna come up through this hole. 
second to the bottom. Okay. Then, and I try to keep a good tension the whole time. Then we're gonna go down through the one underneath it. Give it a little tug. Then we're gonna come back through this hole that we just went through over here. And you want to try as hard as you can not to split your thread. That will make tightening your signature very difficult. So if you can do the best you can not to split your thread, um, that will be a huge advantage to you. Okay, we're going to go through, back through the middle one. And then we're going to come up through the second to the top one. Okay, and like I said, I'm keeping tension down through the top one. Whoops, sorry, just whacked the camera. Back through this last one, and that's going to create our first line here. Trying to make sure that I don't split my thread, even with a dull blunt nose needle, you can still easily split, split your thread. Okay, and then the last thing we're going to do, I'm going to loosen my tail up, is go under this one and pull it off the needle. And then I'm going to tighten it all. I'm going to give it a good tug. And then I'm going to hold it. Once I've tugged it, I'm going to hold it, flip over my book, and use my fingernail to just do this and make sure there's no slack. They should all feel nice and snug, but not like, oh my gosh, like you're overly tightening to the point where, you know, your your book is page is gonna be so hard to tang to to tighten. So then this last thing I'm gonna do is give it a really good double knot down here at the bottom. Really good double knot. And this is where that waxed linen thread shows its strength. Because that knot, because of the wax on there, is just going to stay forever. Now you can do a couple things. You can um, leave these tails long. I like to do that. And then you'll see that I hang beads and things off the bottom. And you end up with this cute little stuff on the bottom. Um, I'm not going to do that one here because we have a big fluffy tassel and I don't want to have too much hanging out everywhere. Uh, you can also cut them short so that they stay inside the book and put little paper tabs or punches on them. That looks cute floating around in here. Um, you can tie a bow and just leave that. But here I think what I'm going to do is I kind of just sometimes like to leave a nice long string like this like that and just leave them. That's how I'm going to choose to do this one. Now I will show you. We can take, now that we're fully bound in, we can take out the clips and then we just check our binding really quick before we move on to the next signature. It's like check, 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 double check. So I take my two sides up and give them a nice squish way down here at the bottom. You know, I'm just kind of squishing them together with my hand. I'm making sure everything moves back and forth. I can see I've got a nice straight line. I can see that I haven't accidentally bound into certain other holes. <laughs> so I kept it through the same one. And then usually what I like to do is flip through every page to make sure that I didn't sometimes, because I bind with my tags and everything in there. Sometimes I have had one slip over and then I punch through it. OMG, that's a nightmare. And then I feel awful and think I should take out the tags. And then guess what I do? Not take them out and just keep going. So. Make sure everything seems functional. Plus it's nice to just kind of give everything a little bit of a, I'm not pushing hard at all. I'm just kind of smoothing, right? And that's it. That is one signature bound. Now you just have to repeat times uh, four <laughs> to get the next four signatures in. They get progressively harder as you get closer in. So I'm going to get my next piece of twine here and get my next signature. Um, and then I'm going to do my same thing. And I'm not going to make you 
watch me do every single so like here's an example of a half sheet that I just want to make sure maybe I wanted it to slide down lower or be up at the top I just want to make sure that I kind of have it you know adjusted to where I want it to be and I'm good with it right there all right and there's the center of that signature so now I just tap 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 and I put our oh yeah we have this oh the other thing I forgot to do and I forget this all the time is to put a T at the top um, because sometimes there is a slight difference and you really want all of your um, pages to be well bound honestly I think that's a huge um, difference in journals that I've seen or owned is you know binding your pages and you can do all this gorgeous work into a book and then you know just not pay attention to your binding and it, it makes all the difference um, a good high quality binding really says that you've taken the time you know to get it all put together well um, and it's gonna stand the test of time uh, you can do beautiful work and then not bind it very well and uh, unfortunately the signatures are loose and it will cause damage to the signatures themselves it'll cause damage to the, the um, whatever you've bound through so yeah it's just it's worth it to take the time to check and double check and make sure you're kind of doing this the right way not that I'm an expert because I definitely am not the expert by any means I have just had lots of fails and wins along the way and I've learned how to do the wins a little bit more regularly than the fails that's all <laughs> now I'm gonna take I've also bound my templates in before I can't even tell you how many times that's why um, I just use a scrap piece of paper for those because otherwise you end up with a um, you have to rip it out <laughs> <laughs> you have to rip it out and a scrap piece of paper rips out easier than a piece of cardboard or something. Okay, I'm going to sew this in and I'm just going to keep working through this and I will probably just fast forward it so you don't have to watch me um, do every single dang signature. Um, the closer, I will say the closer you get, you know, after you've done your first one, you have to make sure you're still going through the right holes. But um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and keep going on this. because as I was trying to bind and stay in frame, it was just too hard and my hands were hurt and weird and stuff. So I just finished sewing them in off camera, but there we go. Um, now you'll see why measuring the spine in my last video, how I talked about making it so it's not alligator mouth. Look at this, we've got a perfectly sized spine to perfectly encompass um, all the goodness inside and it's not actually alligator mouthy at all matter of fact there's actually a little bit of give there before it even gets alligator mouthed we've got our lovely fabric spine and then in between each signature you can see that you know showing through so whatever you choose to put in the middle on your spine know that it will be seen uh, that's a opportunity also to do you know fun little details if you want you could always put you know glue down a little piece of ribbon like I've got this ribbon that I was using 
for other things. If you wanted to get creative, you could certainly put a cute little piece of ribbon in between your signatures like that. Um, and you could even leave it sticking up out of the top and bottom a little. That would be super cute. So, you know, depending on how much space you've got in between, um, I like to leave a little bit. That's like a half an inch. But you know what? That's a good thing because now there's room, you know, to expand and clip things in and put pictures in and whatever, you know, you want to do. And it won't be hugely too big. The last thing I need to do is put an eyelet in for the tassel which we made in a different video. I've got this large fluffy tassel, which will look so cute hanging off the side of this thing, but people won't, might not always want the tassel. So um, I'm gonna put an eyelet in. However, I can't put it right dead center because there's a signature there. So I'm just gonna move it over and put it in between the, um, for the second and third signatures right here. And in order to do that, I'm going to use my uh, crop dial and I'm gonna very creatively and I don't know how to show you this on camera but I'm gonna just do my best to put this through and line it up I'm gonna just try and you know get it in between there and I don't want to get even close to any of my stitching because that would suck if I if I punched through a stitch or something, oh my gosh, that would, that would really, that would make Nikki not a happy camper. Then I'm going to go with the bright copper one, I think, because that seems like fun. Bright, shiny copper. Yeah, that looks pretty. And then I'm going to use the setting end of my crocodile just to set that eyelet in. Crunch it in there real good. Make sure that's in there and no frayed edges. Perfect. So now I have got a little hole, a little eyelet there, and I've got the tie that I used to tie this, um, or I did stick a little bulb pin through, and that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna stick the bulb pin. You could put uh, a jump ring in here and then use a bulb pin. Uh, to connect it. Like I said, you could you can do all kinds of ways to connect a tassel. You could put it on a clip, a bulldog clip or something, and do it that way. Did I get that on there? Yeah. I'm going to okay, flip it around like this because here is the wonderful part of doing it this way. Is now it hangs off and look at that it's super cute but it will also flip all the way up out of the way when you want to open your book so that way you can keep your tassel attached work in your book and then open it you know or close it and have your tassel back on the side now um, the last thing I usually do is decide on a closure and decide on a um, something on the front now I just forgot that I had made this little book um, back when I was starting to talk about this uh, this whole project. I forgot I made this and I had said maybe it would go on the front but as I was looking for my tassel I found this and I thought you know I don't know if I'll want to attach it permanently because look if you open it up and you want to write on the white side that's kind of hard to do but maybe it will just be tied on and then you could take it off because I actually just really really enjoy the hand feel of this velvet and I kind of just want to leave it as is and someone else could certainly whoever you know purchases this could put whatever they wanted on there but I think what I'm gonna do is just put this on and tie a closure over it um, give me a second I'm gonna grab something to make a tie closure out of and I'll be right back here we go. I went through my bin and decided on some sage green and purple to kind of go with the purple on the side there, some crinkly seam binding. So we're going to just tie these guys on. And let's see. Just 
Do I want to tie over the front or over the side? I think I'll go right on the corner here. And honestly, guys, that's a wrap for this chunky monkey. This I I love. I love this book. Let's back her up a bit here because it's kind of hard to see all of that in frame. Um, so there we go, guys. I love it. I love how cheerful and happy. I love all the floofy goodness over here. The bow just adds to the floofy goodness. There's some stuff on top there. We've got our nice little tassel hanging off the side. We've got our cute stitching, our nice straight lines from being diligent in our, um, and then we've got all our threads hanging out, out of the back, the bottom here, because, you know, I love that too. So, um, thanks for joining me on this little adventure of creating the wildflower journals. Um, I've got the other ones over here. Oh, I'll show you just a quick little look at this in all their glory, the chartreuse. Oh, okay, so the next video that you see from my channel, which will come out uh, if you're watching this the day I put this out, then it'll come out the next day because I'm going to edit these videos, get the these up, and then um, probably film the flip through right away. And once that goes live, these will be in my shop. So um, and then I've got another, I've got one more project that I really want to try and get through or at least get some good working on before school gets back in session and everything gets a little busier. Um, so anyway, guys, I uh, hope that you enjoyed walking through this process with me in these last couple of videos here. I hope that you have a wonderful morning or afternoon or evening or middle of the night, whatever time it is on whatever side of this fantastic globe of ours that we all live on, um, that you live on. And until I see you guys next time, take care, take care, stay safe, and God bless you guys. Bye.